Okay, so there's this tug of war between suppression. How's, what's the immune system? I suppose I need a really healthy immune system to kill cancer. That's right. So how does the immune system promote cancer? Well, I said that it, cancer itself can evade the immune system's response, but there's, cancer is promoted by an immune response in the case of, I think I'll just talk about this slide here. I have about 10 other ones, but I'll just talk about this slide here to end. Cancer is promoted by an immune response in chronic inflammation. So this ties its back to Lyme disease or H. pylori or Coxsackie virus or a chronic uh, mercury toxicity or any other toxicity. Anything that's going to produce a chronic low-grade inflammatory state presupposes me to cancer for a variety of reasons that the rest of my slides talk about on a very technical note. But just understand that. Chronic inflammation is our enemy. But you have to balance that. If I have an immune response to kill a strep that I'm just exposed to, that is an inflammatory response. So inflammation, it goes back to what I initially said, nothing is bad in itself. It's overabundance of anything, especially overabundance over time. So chronic inflammation is a low-grade infection for a long period of time. Wait a second. Now we get back to Lyme disease. So I have chronic Lyme disease, Th1 dominant. I'm always firing this immune response. I always have this low-grade inflammatory. That's why my joints ache. That's why my muscles ache. That's why I got this headache. That's why I can't think clearly because I had inflammation in the brain. So I got all these, you know, upper motor neuron symptoms as well, these neurological issues because I have inflammation in my head. So you are really setting yourself up for even graver problems because chronic inflammation promotes cancer. Cancer can promote chronic inflammation as well, but chronic inflammation can promote cancer. So let's go into how do you actually treat these things. So there's some things that you could do from a nutritional approach to address chronic inflammation in itself. First of all, my number one thing is always find out why. So that's my tagline, I guess. It's a tagline on our sign outside our clinic right now until we move. Never stop asking why. You gotta find out why. So I have chronic inflammation, you know, with giving me symptoms of brain fog, early dementia, I can't think straight, I have episodes where I get anger issues, anxiety, depression, etc., etc. I have aches and pains, I don't feel good. I have, you know, so I've been diagnosed with Lyme. Okay, so number one, find out why. Is it the Lyme that's causing the issues? Is the person autoimmune? Number two, what dominance are they? Number three, and what's the best treatment approach to get rid of this? Do you have to fix the gut? You have to fix the detox pathways. You have to heal the organs. I wish I could stay, sit here in a two-hour lecture and tell you exactly how to get somebody better that has chronic Lyme or has, has cancer. I wish it was that easy. It's just not. Everybody's individual and everybody has to be treated as such. But using frequency medicine can be really helpful, but that alone doesn't get rid of inflammation. That can help. Frequencies can really help kill the antigen, but you still got to get rid of the inflammation. So what are some of my favorite things to do with getting rid of inflammation? So I already told you one of them is anti-inflammatory herbs like curcumin. So curcumin is turmeric. It's the active ingredient of turmeric. What did I say you have to take curcumin with? A fat. What else can you add to curcumin that will increase its effectiveness? Biopterin, pepper, black pepper will help increase. So there's a number of products on the market today that actually have, that's already pre-emulsified in a fat and it already has pepper in it. So you can just take it that way. So that will help decrease the inflammation. Uh, uh, but again, if I'm just going to decrease the inflammation and I'm not getting rid of the cause of inflammation, that's like, you know, having a barn full of rats because you have 
a manure pile in your barn and you just get out your 22 and you're just going to sit outside your barn and shoot rats. You're never going to end. You have to get rid of the manure pile that's causing the rats, right? So you have to find out that reason why. Does that make sense? So dealing with cancer, just let me, let's, let's finish up this because I only got five minutes left here and we got to go to break. And then, uh, then we'll have a question and answer session in place of that last session. That helps. So dealing with cancer in the immune system, uh, what we find, we test for the reason a person, so there, in our clinic there's four pillars to take care of a cancer patient. So there is, number one, you've got to find out why the person's got the cancer. There's a reason why they have a tumor growing in their body. So the reason why, remember I said, is there's an abnormality that caused a lack of apoptosis and a rapid replication cycle, but we got to find out what that reason why is. Now that's completely ignored in standard oncology. Here's your cancer, this is the chemo we're going to use. Well, why do I have it? What? So it's just not even thought of. There's a lot of studies on the reason why people have cancer. They're all post-mortem studies. Oh, after you die, then we'll figure out why you have it. It's not flying for me. So a person can have cancer because of H. pylori. Again, we use that example. Would it be wise to get rid of the H. pylori? Could the H. pylori cause metastasis? I think we should get rid of the H. pylori too, okay? Let's try to get rid of your cancer, but let's get rid of the H. pylori too. Second pillar is, what are we going to use from a nutraceutical standpoint to kill that cancer? So our talk on cancer was quite brief here. But if you don't deal with the nutraceutical piece of cancer, what are we going to use that is going to be most effective to kill that growing cancer mass? We're never going to have victory. So from a standard oncology approach, they're using chemotherapy. Well, that's all good and fine, but chemotherapy has its side effects besides being sickness. The side effect is that it promotes more metastasis through um, reducing an immune system function so that circulating tumor cells could grow. But uh, sometimes you've got to use chemotherapy too. But there is a nutraceutical approach that will work best for that patient. Thirdly, I think you have to use a RIFE. Since I started using RIFE 16 years ago, we have never taken on a cancer patient without demanding that they get a RIFE machine. So that is essential. So, and then you've got to program it the right way. So we do a lot of work to figure out the frequencies, and I personally program everybody's program, and they use it every single night, and every single night is a different program. So their Monday through Sunday is a different program that they're using every single night. And then fourthly, there's a whole mess of other stuff, like we kind of touched on here. How's their liver? How's their kidneys? How's their colon? How's their... You got to address all those things and it becomes mind-boggling and exhausting sometimes. But you have to do that if you're going to have success. Okay, but I don't have cancer. How can I prevent it? Biggest way is decrease chronic inflammation and any sources of chronic inflammation.